swept up in a wave of desire, we are sent leaping for the stars. We're cast upon the shore in passion's final act as the two parts fall away spent. But energy creates motion and contact. Single threads twisting and binding, spinning a call of consciousness, weaving the thread that binds flesh to flesh and each passing moment to the next and it begins. The twisting thread that ripens, gathering an ancient tide in its new wet hands. The binding thread that ties us, that grafts the future to the past in each miraculous strand. The weaver's thresh of flesh and bone, wefted in a moment, warped in stone of that which can be spoken of, but never ever known till the breaking of the waters, that long dark journey walked alone, that night of blood, of sweat, of pain and fear, rolling in on the breakers as the shore draws near, riding the blade that cuts from the loom, the fate of the weaving, the balance that's due, lest it slip and cut the shining thread that wraps and binds the two and it begins a breath a cry a flexing hand a new face comes to sight now the call has opened new threads dancing in the light and alchemy of weaving a hard-won gift from the arms of night snatched from leviathan's deep as we dived for the color bright and the mantle of the mother covers you in the ba veil that binds us all, a weaving of the future in the colours of the call that shall bind you to that moment as you leapt into the light, drunk on the pulsing ocean of the ancient tidal night to catch that shuttle as it passed you, dropped from the weaver's hand, the power in the binding of a single shining strand and that thread is always moving as each new day is born to all the things that bind us of the colors we have worn the veil descends identity shroud as function follows form and motherhood weaves her bright wild threads across the face of dawn thank you Thank you very much, Biko, and all the local and visiting poets who came for this anniversarial poet's breakfast. I'm going to finish with one poem, and it's titled, Suddenly the Teenager Turns 70. <laughs> when I was little, Australia was a small piece of pink plastic around which I would trace a sharpened pencil line. I could hold Australia in my hand and carry it in my bag. All my friends had an Australia. My circle was closed and Catholic, dead middle class and mid North shored up. Blinkers were bolted on with blind faith and the fear of hell coming from the strange smells of the black robed priests and nuns. Lists of mysteries, histories, the unbroken circle of college boys and convent girls. Always in the same bubble, I swam backyard to backyard through the chlorine pools of the summer, a cartoon of a character, sniffing the rich man's poison. But I still have my toys, bells, cymbals, gongs, tambourine, triangle, maracas, guiro, cabasa, shekere, claves, click sticks, and of course, cowbell. But what would Miss Boswad say? Miss Boswad who was quite old and well embalmed in perfume when I was her piano pupil way back in 59, what would she say to the cannabis and beer-drenched reggae keyboard synthesizer <laughs> thumping rhythms in the pubs of Byron's Backpacker Bay? What would she say? It was in 59 my parents passed me from the nuns and to the Jesuits with whom I spent 10 long years in a straw boater a blue and gold blazer and a grey woolen suit. Thank Christ it wasn't a boarding school. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> In 59, I took my seat, always a window seat, 
beside the mighty harbour, next to the mighty bridge, cross the waters to the convict metropolis. On those first important days, just outside my window and over that bit of water, they built an opera house whose wings and sails and mad fortune blurred my view of the CBD building blocks that stone-faced awaited my graduation, marriage and greed. The priests tried to scare me with religion. Too late, the nuns already had, and to torture me with William Wordsworth, Gerard Manley Hopkins and John Bloody Dunn, such that I didn't wrote a poem for years. But still the opera house loomed seductive and disorienting. I'm not Catholic. The 60s began with a parish barn dance, but they ended on LSD, with the music pouring like lava out of the speakers. I walked miles around the pool table with my turntable turning my Beatles and Beach Boys and Peter, Paul and Mary and a crumpled Bob Dylan. And then we went to university and to war in 69. It was a war of not going to war. It was an anti-Gallipoli of peace, not war, and suddenly we were in free fall through the safety net, out of the harbour's mouth and a convoy of old Holdens and Combies travelling north to Nimbin. Rainbows on mushrooms and lentils on muesli. Home birth in mud baths and dope rip off blood baths. We camped in the graveyard of the forest in the mist and the rain. A beautiful naked woman in white gumboots. But they weren't white for long. Sex and drugs and Eastern religion all in the same broiling stew. We purged and we fasted and we smoked and we tripped and we sang. All you need is love. There were mandolins and order harps and dulcimers and zithers, matins and martins and gibsons and fenders carrying speakers and amplifiers and singers on benders, drummers on ecstasy, bass player on booze. Or as Mother Ignatius used to tell me when I was, when I was five, David Hallett, David Hallett, you are going to burn in hell. And I got so badly sunburned on the family holiday at Avoca Beach that Christmas. There were years of roads and shows and shows and shows and roads and shows and shows and shows. Of artists and poets and publicans and bands and all their partners caught up in the dance. A merry-go-round of marriages and cross-pollinations of smooth tongues and ears licking lovers from one heart to another. And finally, just as the bell rang time and friends became practical or grandparental or dead, just then I loved a woman and we loved making beautiful, difficult babies. And the days were filled and the nights were full and a century turned over my shoulder. And neither of my parents are standing here upon my 70th day to witness my poet's promotion. I have proved impossible to live with and hopefully to live without my children racing ahead. My ageing poetry is chasing after the mad, mad world racing ahead. The opera house looms. Miss Boswad screws up her face, her one and only screw. But I still have my toys yet. Yet, the mirror always remembers ghosts of parties not drinking, throwing down drinks into the fires of fun, and the stoned age never ends, and the clock screaming, and the clock winding down into purple hours, purple minutes. The stop clock waits the heart to beat, dying for another breath. Afraid to sleep to dream the monsters we've all made under the werewolf moon, the vampire moon, the ripper, the slasher, the psycho, the pint of bitter blood versus a cup of dew. Melting the, the tenderness we all crave, another kiss, another breath, another day. Till our eyes are water and breath is but a breeze and we fall to gravity and we fall. And we are stardust once again. Thanks very much, everyone who came along today, all those poets and speakers.
There's a great cabaret up in the hall tonight. Hope to see you there. If you'd like my book, I have one or two. Have a good day, everyone. Cheers.